Hello, welcome to Help You Math. Today's topic is about Riemann sum. First, we need discussing some basic math ideas. So first, let's start line right here I have. Let me sign the weight of this line. All right, let's say this is five. This could be five meters. Let's just have a five right here. If I add the same length, five, now we're going to have two fives. Let me just add one more. That's going to be five, 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 three fives. So the total length of this line, which is not very strict, we don't have to worry, I just have to add up. Right, so the total is five plus five plus five, which is the same as three times five. Total is 15. Right, but this is the way we want to use it in the future for Riemann sums. So let's remember we're going to have triple of the five. Of course, sometimes we don't know exactly the length of a line, right? So we can call this a, a W, or someone may call this a delta X. Doesn't really matter to us. Let's say we're still going to have three of them, right? So from the beginning right here on the left side, all the way to the right side, the total length of this will be 3W or 3 delta x. Okay. The second part I want to talk about is rectangular. Let's say I have a rectangular right here. We want to find the error of this rectangle right here. I'm not going to call this rectangle anymore. I'm going to call this a building because a building, I need to find a height and a width, right? So the error of this, error A equals to the height. I'm going to call H times the W. So the W times H will give me the error of this building right here. The reason I'm using a building because we're going to do some physics problems in the future, right? So we're going to use the same idea right here. <clears throat> so now we could add one more as what we did before. I add a five, I add a five. So now I can continue add a buildings. So this building next to the left side one will have the same width, which is W. Of course, the height is changing. How the height is changing, now it depends on our graph. So the graph of the function will help us to find the height. That's the idea of doing this. All right, so in the future is we want to get a y value, which is function f of x. We want to know exactly what x is so I can find the height of this building. Then I can evaluate the error of this second building. Okay. Now let's start with the Riemann sum. So the Riemann sum is going to help us to find the error under the curve. All right. Let's say I have a function f of, f of x. equals to x squared plus 3. I'm going to graph it right here. So that's going to be a 3, 2, 3, and x squared. I just free graph by my hand, right? So it's not going to be perfect. So now we are working on the Riemann sum is we're trying to use our buildings to cover the error we are looking for. So which error we're looking for, which is the error under the curve, that's everything done right here. We are not able to solve this because we don't know how to find the error 
when we have curve like that before. The only thing we can do is we know the rectangular we had, which is the building. So we're talking about I can use my building to cover this, right? So what we're gonna do is, okay, I'm thinking about I have this is my first building right here. Now I use a second building. They have the same width. The same width. When I cover this, if you see the, I'm highlighting this part of perfect, cover exactly what I have. This is the area we're looking for. However, we have something extra right here, right? That's not good. If we can get rid of those small purple error, then I add all the buildings. The error will be exactly what we're looking for, for function x squared plus 3. Before we understand how to do that part, let's first figure out how many buildings we have and what's error after we're adding all the buildings. That's the sum of the buildings we are looking for. Now, there's a very important part is how you look at the building right here, right? So the way I'm looking at a building is on the right side, which is right ending points, right? So this is a, every time I'm looking at it. Why this is very important? Because that tells us where it's starting with, right? So that's the, let's look at our first building, right? So our first building, I'm going to circle it. Our first building is right here. Let's find an error for that. So my first building, I'm going to say A1. That's going to be equals to the width, which I already gave you right here. So let's use W right here. That's a W times the height. You see the curve is getting increased, so I'm going to have to give h1. So the width times h1, so h1 is the height of the building, which have to give by the curve on the right. And how can I get this height right here? So let's look at our starting, our starting from 0 to the w. So, and at this point, x equals to w. When we look up to find a y value, which is my height of the building, that's give us the height. So that give us the f of w is my h1. This is the key to understand how to do the Riemann sum, right? So now I have my h1, so h1 is f of w. Now let's find my second building error. Second building error will be the same width, which is W we have, times the height H of 2. So W times F. We have, we have to give the X value to get a Y value from the function. Right, so now let's look at it. We're starting from the 0. Now we have double of the width to getting the right side of the second building, right? So as we discussed before, so this will be 2w. That's it. Now it's very easy to find my third one because what we have to do is w times f of 3w. So no matter how many we have, we just have to keep on adding. Now the question is, what is going to be our ending, our last building we have? In order to understand that, right, let's starting from 0 to our certain ending point. Let's do 0 to 2. Now we can figure out our width. In order to give an equal weight, equal likely weights for each building, 
All right, so the first is we're going to do 2 minus 0. That's a whole distance from here to here. And how many building we want? We need a many. All right, then we're going to say we need n buildings. So now our W will be Two over n. Then times the first function we have, that's still gonna be f of w. W we already have it, so that's gonna be two over n. Now we have a next building we have will be two over n times two times. 2 over n. The third one we have will be 2 over n times 3 times 2 over n. Now let's look at our last one. Last one we are ending at a 2. All right, so the right side we have will be on the 2 to getting the height which is f of 2. Now let's gonna be say the last building we have is sub n which gonna be the weight 2 over n times f of 2. If we want to use exactly the same way we had before that's gonna be easier to look at. That's gonna be n times 2 over n. This is very easy to understand because we have n buildings, right? Let's say we have starting from one building as 1 times 2 over n. Second one is 2 buildings, 2 times 2 over n. Last one, uh, the third one is 3 times 2 over n. The last one will be n times 2 over n. When you cancel out n, that's exactly f of 2. Now we have all the buildings we are looking for. We're just going to add up all of them. That's going to be the sum of those buildings. Now we're going to add in the sum for the buildings right now. I'm going to erase the graph first. All right, we're going to go back to the graph to understand what happening after we add it. So we're going to have a sum of A1 plus A2. A3 all the way plus An. So we're going to have a lot to write right now. But I'm going to write first, then we're going to understand why we use summation notation right here, right? Because we don't want to keep on writing. So I'm doing my second building. So I'm doing my third building. 3 times. Now I'm doing the last one n times 2 to the n. Now it's time for us to look at which variable is changing, which are variables that never change. So 2 to the n right here never changed. So if I use a summation notation, that is always going to be constant. Now this will Following is a function, right? So function is still going to be a function we had before, x squared plus 3, not going to change. And now we look at the numbers changing only happens to the coefficient right here. That's uh, not coefficient. The multiplication tells you how many buildings we have. Right? It's going to be first one is 1 times, 2 times, 3 times, n times. That's going to be, we call it i right here. To satisfy the changing of from 1 to all the way to the n. So we're going to say i equals to 1. That's what's the first we're starting uh, until we have n. So that's going to be a summation of 2 to the n times the function i times 2 to the n. Right? Because 2 to the n never change right here. Everybody can say that. Now we just drive all the way to have the summation for the Riemann sum to prepare 
the Riemann sum because what happening is how many we define for the buildings. If we have a three, that's going to be i equals to one, n equals to three. If we have four, that's n becomes to four. How many we need it? So we don't have that small place we discussing before, right? Remember, we have a little bit more than we are to be looking for. This part. Now we thinking is we keep on getting we cut. If I cut this, this error will be smaller. If we keep on cutting. This little error will be smaller and smaller. When that's gonna be very, very, very small, so we don't have to worry about it anymore, is if we cut this infinity times, right? So if the n goes to infinity, that's gonna help us to get rid of the extra error we're looking for. So remaining for Riemann sum is we have to take a limit. So in order to get the total error under the curve, which if we use definite integral, that's going to be from 0 to 2, finding the x squared plus a 3 dx. That's exactly the same as using the definition of the Riemann sum right here. That's going to be the limit. n goes to infinity. To get a sum of all buildings we are looking for, If we calculate, we will get the value of it. And we can compare with our formula for the integrations right here to compare to see if we get the same answers. Right, so next video we're going to do is find out how we solve the right side part. Thank you for watching.